Moving from Windows to Linux can mean a change of behavior in how you use your computer. You no longer have to do things like run an antivirus checker or defragment your hard drive. But what happens when you want to install an application? Well, many people will try and do what they always used to do with Windows. Go on the internet and try and find something. And yes, you could do things like searching on your favorite search engine for the application, ending up on some fine upstanding websites like savedownload.co, which is anything but safe. Download Cam Studio, an open source desktop recorder, which, oh, by the way, how does that look in Virus Total? Oh yeah, it's got a Trojan inside it, yeah. Or maybe you could end up with something safe like Videolan VLC Movie Player. Yeah, if I go onto the download, it wants me to download the Windows version. Oh, that's no good, I'm using Linux. Yeah, and actually I've ended up with an executable. So what am I going to do? Run it in Wine and make my life a misery? Or should I find a Linux version? And if so, how? Well, most, if not all Linux distributions come with a software center. Very much like the concept you have on Android and iPhone. For me in KD Neon with the KD desktop, it is called Discover. For Ubuntu, you can just search for software and it will bring up the software center. So there are quite a few applications inside here, generally divided out into various categories. Oh, by the way, here's how you can get VLC Media Player. It's quite simply sat right here. So anyway, we have categories, which you can scroll around. It will no doubt take a bit of getting used to with the new application names. GIMP Image Editor, yes, an image editor. Inkscape, an image creator using scaled vector graphics. Something like Blender is probably going to be beyond most people, but these applications exist. We can get a bit more information about them, some comments. And for some distributions, you do get a screenshot of what the application looks like. So you can also search. I would like a CD ripper and it's recommended sound juicer. That's not the only one. I know there's a few more that just hasn't come up in the search in this. For a more granular in-depth look at the repositories, you can use Synaptic, which doesn't look particularly good here on KDE desktop with my theming. The appropriate application for me is called Moon, but generally Synaptic is available on many different Linux distributions. So we have 86,000 packages available here which differs to the 56,000 advertised in Synaptic. That's clever, isn't it? Anyway, there's quite a lot of packages available. And for gaming, you do have the option of installing Steam. Just go onto the Steam website and download the installer. It will automatically recognize you're running Linux and will download an appropriate installer for your distribution. So you can scroll around the store and find quite a few games this way. So all these are perfectly safe methods of installing applications. But if those numbers are still not good enough for you, well, here's an Ubuntu specific method of installing even more applications. And not just more applications, but newer versions of the applications you already have. This is something called Personal Package Archives, or PPAs for short. So I could do a search for something like Kodi. Now this is a bit hit and miss of what the actual Kodi repository is. So in some cases, it might just be easier to do a search for what the correct PPA is. And that is the correct result there at the top. So there's some instructions, so it is a terminal command, so sudo add apt repository, ppa tmxbmc slash ppa, sudo apt get update, and then sudo apt get install Kodi in this case. You can use the personal package archives for Ubuntu and any other Linux distribution based on Ubuntu, such as Linux Mint or Zorin. But we also have one more cross-platform installer for Linux, something called Snaps. Snaps are slightly different to those DB files and have no real bearing to anything in the likes of Windows. Snaps provide sandboxing to run an application isolated from any other applications or folders on your hard drive. And they also have all the dependencies included within one installer. So it's quite a nice, efficient method of installing applications and very safe in terms of security. However, it can require additional hard drive space. Just taking a look at a couple of the categories. So media might be a bit more interesting. Okay, so there's only like three applications. So it is significantly smaller than the built-in repositories that I have for Ubuntu. 
but I wanted to show you a couple of ways of installing applications safely into Ubuntu. And these methods here ensure you don't end up with anything malicious, although you should perhaps be a bit careful with adding the third-party PPA repositories into your system because you don't always know what there is actually in there. Well, thanks for watching. I'll see you all later.